Peggy 12. With traditional Celtic music, you have instruments like whistles and flutes, you've got bagpipes, Ulian pipes, you have uh, stringed instruments like mandolins and also hammered dulcimer. It has a very large range, so there are moments that seem very traditional and folksy, and then there's big epic moments that sound like, you know, a Hollywood film, and, and a lot of places in between that. It was very important to have a Celtic-inspired score, so that's what we were looking for for sorcery. But we wanted to do something a little bit unusual with Celtic music and to somehow kind of stretch the use of the instruments and maybe resample them at certain times in order to give the world of sorcery its own unique sound. So it was inspired by Celtic music, but it was a little bit twisted at the same time. We have drums, we have flutes, we have something that feels kind of medieval. But at the same time, we didn't want to be limited to that. We didn't want it to feel like we were at a Ren Fest. And so when we spoke to the composer, we said, you have the license to bring in other sounds to create a wider sound palette. And this wound up being essential to creating this feeling of magical strangeness of the world. Mark is an absolutely brilliant composer. He just seemed to be the perfect fit for sorcery because not only is, does he have just sort of a great command over melody and a great command over the orchestra, but he also has a very unique collection of exotic and unusual instruments. And these are sounds that Mark incorporated into the score in just a really, really brilliant way. Mark Mancino, he got it right, basically right off the bat. It was a real joy to work on this game because it all just came out naturally. He's an amazing composer. I think the biggest challenge with game audio is that everything needs a sound, but there's so much that's happening that eventually there's too many sounds for the brain to even process. So you have to choose what you want the listener to hear at any given moment. And on sorcery, it was definitely spell casting, you had environment sounds, you had the character sound effects, and then the music. With the end game sound, a lot of what we were looking for is to give the player clear cues as to what he should be experiencing at a given moment. And so we made a big distinction between exploration music and between combat music. And it was designed so that even if you don't quite realize that you're in danger, all of a sudden you start to get the beginning sounds of combat music starting up, and you're like, oh no. I'm, you start looking around, because you get this feeling of, oh, the music is, is letting me know that I'm in danger, even though I don't quite realize what the nature of the danger is. The whole spell casting system is based on natural elements, fire, wind, ice. We wanted to make sure that the sounds were natural, but also magical. We want to have the sound respond to the force that you're using. So if you really fling it, it's going to be a lot more powerful sounding than if you're just kind of waving it around. You feel it. It's not just something that you hear, it's something you feel in your chest when you fire it off. It's about the loudest the game gets. Is when you have a fire tornado and you're shooting arcane bolts into it, there's a level of destruction that is unmatched throughout any other part of the game, and it's, it's really fun. You get the feeling of hearing these great melodies and having some great music and great harmony, but at the same time, you're also hearing all of these magic sounds that are sort of woven into the game. It's a really good sounding game. The dialogue's fantastic. You are seriously suggesting I drink something I found lying around in a tomb? Come on, where's your sense of adventure? The music is great. The spells sound great. The environments are great, and they all play well together. I'm really proud of how sorcery has come out.